G'day, I'm Ash. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. We're getting ourselves back to the VL. I don't even know how you pronounce this little bastard, but I've had an interesting match. This was seen live. Uh, if you watch me on Twitch, link in the description. Very interesting match. And what I'm going to say is this aircraft is very much about its firepower. However, the aircraft itself is near damn useless. 10 meters a second climb rate. And we went through this in our first impressions of the aircraft that we did earlier this week. But I thought I'd just showcase what happens when your team necessarily doesn't do anything. Or more precisely, when the enemy team doesn't necessarily do anything. Because this was a really strange match. This only happens, I guess, rarely. But for me, it seems to be a more and more common occurrence, and it happens at top tier a lot, happens at mid tier a lot as well. Not that I've been playing a lot of top tier, in fact I've been playing less and less War Thunder as the months go on. But I still play it on stream, and so my real only play time is when I have two to three hours to sit down and sort of play in front of you lot. Which is embarrassing, but hey, it's a journey nonetheless. And yeah, I have been struggling to put out at least decent entertaining content, at least in my view of entertaining. I make videos primarily for myself because, well, no one else really makes videos to the way I want them to. There are plenty of channels that make fantastic educational and, and just beautiful gameplay videos, but for me, I'm just a average bloke, you know? I've, I've always tried to be down to earth, and I guess that's what I want to really try and put through. You know, those games I did in the other video were pretty mediocre and pretty average. I showcased this thing in a silver sort of lining. The aircraft not being able to handle particularly well, not being able to climb very well, not being able to do anything particularly at all. It's all about those machine guns you have. Again, the deflection on the elevator isn't exactly great, although it does lock up at high speeds. That is accurate. There should be, or at least should be a flight model update to this thing in the future, I'd hope. And it doesn't need that many flight model changes. Maybe just the deflection of the elevators and a little more rudder authority to what its historical rate or counterpart would be. And it's pretty much there. The engine characteristics, the, the sort of the wing loading, the way the airframe handles as a whole is about 98% there, at least according to Finnish uh, fighter pilots and their testimonies while testing and flying this particular aircraft. They didn't necessarily like it. They said it was nimble at medium speeds and was crucially just underperforming at most other tasks. Which leads me to believe that it's a good addition to the game because if we had something that was meta game, or at least necessarily top of its sort of clubbing potential, so to speak, overpowered if you may, then maybe we would have, uh, I guess, a bit more of a problem. But it's all about the firepower with this machine. Everything about this machine is just pure firepower. We've gone head on with an I-16, completely and utterly knocked him out. Enemy fighters are going to do their bloody best to try and knock us out, but there I didn't really feel like there was any resistance. I sort of felt like climbing to a medium subset altitude and just focusing on targets after everyone else has started to be engaged really worked so play it like a support fighter and you sort of tend to get results but i'm really glad that this isn't a sort of an i-301 example which is a russian aircraft which came into the game which is basically the prototype to the lag series armed with a 20 mil cannon a couple of 12.7 mil guns and you got basically lethality that is unmatched completely and utterly destroying that HU-51, although we did spray and pray just a little bit. After all, they are American 50 calibers. Unlike 20 mils, they kind of just sparkle a lot, especially with Australian ping. And that does play an effect into whether or not your, you know, rounds hit the target. Fortunately, I would, would have got that I-16 had he not been shot down by AAA. He was probably going to be the most uh, viable threat, but I was just laughing to myself because well, the AI over the front lines managed to shoot an I-16 down rather than at an airfield, which is probably something we'd talk in in a later uh, episode because, frankly, base AAA at the moment are providing too much of a incentive for people just to hang around and wait around to the end of the match. 
and I tend to try and play this as a support fighter, but this match really caught me off guard. I decided to play it because I disliked it and I was going to prove a point to some of my chat viewers who were watching at the time. Unfortunately, it kind of backfired, as you'll see here in a minute. MiG-3 is being engaged by Kaya-43, and the SU-2 is even giving it some. It manages to actually critically damage that Kaya-32, and I much applaud, you know, attackers who actually try and help out their team. There's something to be said for how useful bomber aircraft are in the air realistic scene. And I'm not going to give one for arcade or simulator, although bombs tend to be particularly useful in during confrontation. Now that MiG-3 didn't stand a chance, pilot sniped him, and that is a common theme with these guns. They're very, very powerful weapons. SU-2 is going in uh, for a bit of a blast of a time. He just killed that Kai-32. Kai-43 is trying to shoot him down. I was going to give him a bit of breath and I'm like, okay, right, you should be able to shoot down this SU-2. I'm kind of glad that it is an aircraft that isn't meta. I'm very glad that it is kind of mediocre because it does play into a certain skill set. And whatever that is, I don't necessarily know, but my play style doesn't necessarily work with this thing. And when you're dealing with bombers, there's basically no real point at this, you know, end game. SU-2 is really the only threat on the enemy team left after dealing with that MiG-3. I have no idea what happened to the enemy team here, because they've all just disintegrated. Going back to the airfield and rearming to get some more munitions and to get more fuel, there's a Stuka that's popped up. So we're going to take a crack at the Stuka. Now, virtually a non-threatable existence, unless it's a D5 Stuka, we're just going to come in and absolutely wreck this guy's day. Like that, critical hit. Pull away from the scanner and some of the AAA. Roll back over, and this is just going to be basically GG for Mr. Stuka here. I have no idea what he's trying to achieve, but there isn't really any point. This is end game, and well, we're up to six kills at this point. Put a little burst towards his front. Shoot around him just a little bit, and we're probably going to get a pilot snipe again. Or are we going to go for a critical? Nope, pilot snipe. And somehow, the airframe is rather durable. There you go, that's finish design for you right there. Very durable aircraft. And I feel like the enemy team just kind of switched off. I have no idea why that's the case. 543 is going to give it his all at their PBM. I'm going to let him attack him first. You know, it's only fair that I let someone on the team get a kill. After all, we're still basically the only ones going around. Anyway, try and get a few hits on him first. He's dropping his bombs, and then he decides to become a aerobatic display team. <laughs> so, can you imagine the sight of a bomber doing that above the battlefield? Who, you, you wouldn't know what the bloody hell to do. I'm just spraying and praying. I don't really have to do much here at all. Critical hit. I just fall away and just watch him do his thing. And here he goes doing aerobatic loops yet again. Kai 43 is trying to give it his all. Pulling up. And there we go. Well, he's lost all basic control now. I have no idea how he pulled out of that first initial dive. But we're going to come in, shoot direct mass center, and we're going to go for a pilot snipe. I'm sensing a bit of a theme here with this particular aircraft. And, uh, well, there you go. Seven kills. Also note, I'm the only one on the team who has managed to get most of the aircraft on the enemy team. Not a single fighter on my team got a kill. There was one that died to AAA, and there was one that crashed, but other than that, I killed everyone else. And it's weird, because I didn't really do anything aside from spinning the circles a couple of times. Somehow, this match turned out to be a decent one, unlike the other competent matches that I was flying uh, during my last Mariski video. I still have, I don't have any idea how to pronounce this bloody thing. But I've got a question for you. Do you have teams like this? Do you not? Sometimes it just happens. I don't know. I'm not very good at this game. I've lost my edge years ago. So probably 2019 was the last that I was actually decent at this game. But I make videos primarily for myself. So there's that. Hope you enjoyed this one. And if there's anything you want me to check out, then do let me know in the comments down below. I always look for feedback. And feedback also helps improve the channel. So go ahead. You know, toss me a comment down below, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, your view on the, the Muransky is slightly changed. But then again, 
that's all I have to say. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, go follow me on Twitch. We are doing more and more streams as of recent. I have no idea how any of you watch my content. I still don't know. I don't understand it. But thank you very much. I appreciate it. Anyway, we'll catch you the next one soon.